Re- reloading. Yeah, now we are. That's oh, weird. Hello. Oh, hello. Just talking hello. about hello. Just Sorry, talking man. about death. <laughs> <laughs> and anxiety, anxiety and passing it along to your children yeah <laughs> all, well, all, all in good <laughs> anxiety about your children first and yes. probably passing all of it, it along yeah. afterwards yeah the whole, anxiety the whole parents, ball of wax. you know you can just you can create any anxiety you ever could possibly imagine you betcha mm-hmm. uh, my dog sawyer and sia Got me through a really bad anxiety attack once, and I always think fondly of them. Sia, the the, 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 the singer, writer, yeah. Okay. She was. There was a concert on TV, and I enjoy her music. So. Sure, I love Sia. Yeah. You know. See you later. Was that, now? Uh, speaking of uh, later, I did not see an email that was right for the show. Did you? Oh, you tell me this now. Uh, yeah, I put one in. I don't see one. It's right there. Right I see one. 45. Oh, sorry. Oh, I got gotcha. you. You just left one open for me. I didn't oh, see Oh, I one. always do that. When I put one in, yeah, I, yeah. Always, I always leave, put it below so that okay. it's not being pushy. Okay. <laughs> it's politely waiting. No, no, no. I, no, I get it. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I looked through this morning and then. Yeah, this that one's long. So I can summarize it. Yeah, well, the problem was it's not that we didn't get a lot of emails. We did, but they were all pre and post show emails. Yeah, yeah. Which, so I always kind of like mm, it's a lot of context to like give mm-hmm. people if they didn't all happen right. to watch that. Are you guys ready? Mm-hmm. You know, I was born ready, so clearly, I mean, born? I guess Me I could, I, I could have been ne prêt and then become unready oh, somehow, right. but I'm, I'm not. Because you're a you're a male. Je suis prête pour Excellent. la show. Yeah, yeah, that works. All right. Okay. You're you're nicer to her pronunciation than you are mine. Just saying. <laughs> well, yes, that's yes. It's because that's my it. pronunciation is a better. <laughs> because it's perfect. <laughs> all right, all right. We're behind now. We're a minute behind. Come on. Okay. All, right. all right. Daily Tech News Show is powered by you. To find out more, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, April 17th, 2018 from DTNS headquarters in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. And from Elk Central in Helsinki, no, in Finland, I'm Patrick. Do do you have Elks? We actually do in the area. Right now? Near you? Watching you? (laughs) In the audience? (laughs) Do you have I an mean, elk right now? There is and a window. Say, it's pretty dark outside. It was recorded before a live elk audience. <laughs> In Finland, it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to check with our producer, Roger Chang. Roger, is that okay? Uh, sure. I I have little lizards that run outside. So I oh, you're getting crunchy. Crunchy. Oh, it's the lizards. Sorry. Must be the lizards. All right. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Sources tell Bloomberg that Apple will integrate the magazine app Texture, which the company recently acquired, into Apple News and debut its own premium subscription offering. Texture lets users subscribe to more than 200 magazines for $9.99 per month. Sources also say post-acquisition, Apple laid off about 20 of Texture's staff. Twilio, long the standard of adding text messaging and calls to apps and services, is taking its same-based programmable wireless offering out of beta. Twilio Programmable Wireless promises to make it easy for developers to add connectivity to Internet of Things devices. I, you know, I think Twilio is probably one of the most underrated tech companies out there. They just do things that work and make developers' life easy and don't get a lot of headlines. They just have a weird name. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, not like Google. Also been around a long time. <laughs> Microsoft says they're just trying to secure edge devices with a new operating system for microcontrollers called Azure Sphere, but they're also very proud to point out that this is the first time Microsoft is distributing a custom Linux kernel. Hey. Very proud of that. If you remember, 17 years ago, then Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer called Linux a cancer. Ballmer's Clippers did not make the NBA playoffs this year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit more about uh, Microsoft, actually, and other tech companies sending a message, I guess. Yes, exactly. Well, actually, even more than 30 
tech companies, which, as you said, include Microsoft, but also Facebook, announced a joint pledge Tuesday called the Cybersecurity Tech Accord to not assist any government in offensive cyber attacks. The accord also promises to establish new formal and informal partnerships within the industry and with security researchers to share threats and coordinate vulnerability disclosures. However, prominent tech companies like Amazon, Apple, Alph Alphabet, and Twitter did not sign the pledge. So here's my question. What, mm. what is the wording in the pledge that would make one of these large companies, Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, Twitter, huge companies, at least in the tech sphere, be like, mm, nah, we're not doing this. Probably existing contracts would be my guess. Uh, Alphabet got in hot water with some of its own employees over participating in an open uh, AI related Department of Defense initiative, which it publicly defended by saying like, hey, this isn't, we're not helping them do anything with it. We're just helping them with the open AI part of it. My guess is there might be other things that are more classified that they aren't talking about. And maybe that's why some of the employees are a little upset at them and can only go after this one public thing. Mm, makes sense. Uh, it is interesting why, you know, the, the other thing, it might be that that Facebook, Apple doesn't sign these things, right? Apple. Just, <laughs> they're just, they're just yeah, just, they're on their own. Island. For them. They're like, play nice with others. Forget it. Yeah. Uh, but Facebook just maybe like, no, nah, we need to write, we have enough to deal with right now. Our lawyers are kind of busy. We'll look at That's that true. later. Maybe we'll sign it. Cause I feel like it would be in their best interest to sign it. And I, I think it's less likely that Facebook is doing anything to help cyber attacks, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Well, moving on to Google, Google launched AIY projects last year to help developers build AI powered devices. Now the company is releasing updated 2018 kits that are easier to assemble and more widely available with a focus on school use. After continued demand for the voice and vision kits, the company says, especially from the STEM audience where parents and teachers alike have found the products to be great tools for the classroom. The new AIY voice kit version two includes a new Raspberry Pi uh, Zero WH USB connection and a pre-provisioned SD card. A companion app for Android is also available that helps wired wireless setup rather and configuration with iOS and Chrome versions also coming soon. The voice kit costs $49.99. US dollars and the vision kit, which includes a Raspberry Pi camera V is $89.99. These are cool. Uh, Very I'm, cool. I, I think it's funny that a, a Google Home Mini also cost you $50 and it's already assembled. Uh, <laughs> so, so they're kind of the same thing. <laughs> right. but, but this is way cooler than a Google what you're Home into. Mini, Right? Yeah. It, it's basically like, do you want to learn and build your own speaker and come up with AI stuff and, and come with neural networks, run your own neural networks on a Raspberry Pi right in your own home here? Uh, I, I think this, these are fascinating and very cool. And also the fact that, uh, you know, at least according to the company, that um, schools and classes uh, that, you know, veer toward the STEM uh, area of, of education have shown so much interest that this is, you know, this is a new market for them. Yeah, you can go buy these things in Target. Yeah, Target, <laughs> Target.com. Right. Yeah, several several locations right now. Not every location yet, but uh, I, I don't know. Patrick, what do you think? Is this something you could see your your children? <laughs> well, but, but there's only one for now. Let's let's not get ahead of us. I mean, I assume you're oh, gonna there'll have there'll be more, Patrick. Yeah. Uh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the experience so yeah, far, on how much sleep I would bet on it. Yeah. Um, but in the end, no, it's cool. I mean, it certainly seems like something that would be interesting. Uh, you know, it's like advanced Lego, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. you already have Arduino that allows you to do some things, but this seems a little bit more self-contained. Um, it's it seems like a pretty cool package to get someone who's already interested in these kinds of things. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely I'm not sure they're selling it in in Europe or in France at this mm -hmm. point. I had not honestly yet. never heard of it uh, uh, before, but uh, it seems pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I I think the idea here that 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 makes me excited is teaching people and especially kids, but but just general people, here's what I, AI really is. Here's what it can do. Here's what it can't. You can, you can actually try it out right here. It's not mm -hmm. a mystery. Uh, Reuters, Adam Jordan and Kate Cadell have a detailed look at the effects of the U.S. Department of Commerce's decision that stops U.S. companies from selling parts to ZTE. 
for seven years. It's actually a ban on ZTE exporting sensitive technology from the U.S., but it essentially stops U.S. companies from giving ZTE anything that is sensitive. ZTE shipped an estimated 46.4 million phones last year, about half of which had Qualcomm chips inside. Qualcomm's a U.S. company. So this ban stops Qualcomm from selling chips to ZTE. Neil Shaw, research director at CounterPoint Research, estimates that could lose Qualcomm about $500 million in revenue. Now, ZTE will in turn need to source their chips from other places, maybe Samsung or MediaTek uh, or China's own Spreadtrum. That would boost Qualcomm's competitors' business a little bit. There's also the possibility of Chinese retaliation. Uh, they could block Qualcomm's acquisition of NXP. China is still reviewing that right now. They could make it harder for Qualcomm to sell parts to other Chinese companies besides ZTE. Meanwhile, ZTE is the fourth largest smartphone vendor in the U.S. You may not have realized it, but ZTE has 11.2% of the market here in the United States, according to Canalys. And it's not in the top 10 in China. So the U.S. market is important for ZTE as well. Uh, I think a lot of people have not considered, Yeah, I think a lot of people figure, oh, this will probably hurt ZTE, but not very much. They're not big here. Well, they're pretty big here. It'll also hurt Qualcomm, and it'll also help Chinese manufacturers because it could provide them some more business. This seems like uh, the kind of decision that is definitely going to be hard on some companies, but we're touching on topics, and we might talk about this a little bit more later, we're touching on topics where probably the commercial impact, while heavy and important, is the lesser of two evils if you're having these kinds of concerns. Yeah, it's uh, that's not the point. It's beside the point. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's even more than that. Even you know, it might this might be a point that might sway decisions in other areas, but in this area, it's like yeah, it sucks. But you know, there there's a more important uh, goal we're to or danger we're trying to uh, avoid here. So, if that's the cost, so be it. That seems to be the reason. Yeah. Germany's Volocopter has showed off its plans for urban air taxis using vertical takeoff and landing aircrafts, a vision also being pursued by many other companies, including Uber. Volocopter would build several platforms with systems of conveyor belts to move incoming copters to elevators where they descend to receive a freshly charged battery and receive maintenance. The goal would be a takeoff and landing every 30 seconds to handle a thousand passengers an hour. Hour. Volocopter has demonstrated flights in Germany, Dubai, and Los Angeles, but thinks it will be 10 years before a citywide system can be built. Uh, so it's actually Las Vegas, not Los Angeles. Uh, was it CES? Sorry. As a matter of fact. Yeah, um, same thing. But yeah, the, Las Vegas is essentially a suburb it's of Los Angeles, nearby. right? Nearby. Nearby right. anyway. Uh, don't scream at me too loud, Las Vegas people. Okay. <laughs> I don't necessarily need everyone to write in as they always do to tell me how it's impossible for VTOL to work. Uh, what I want to know is why do these companies keep pursuing it? And and why do governments pursue it? I mean, we Vol Volocopter and Uber are the, the two main poster children for this. They're the ones out there doing the, the press uh, tours and, and the demonstrations, and they keep doing it. If it was just a crock, if it was just a fraud, but I don't what, think they would why, keep why doing does it. it confuse you that they keep trying to figure out how to make this work? It's a well, great idea. It's so difficult. I mean, have you 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 read the emails? <laughs> Remember the last <laughs> time we talked about VTOL, all the emails we got about, well, you you can't have this many people in the air and and you can't keep the batteries charged. There's not enough range and, P, well, and there's too many flight regulations to get around. Well, it. Like but the that's, list I goes mean, on. Okay, you could say that about any technology like and, I don't get it. It doesn't exist. Well, no, it's not just I don't get it. There's some practical objections to this that aren't addressed in most of these demonstrations. And in fact, this one, Volocopter actually came out and said, and we have an even more complex system involving elevators and a thousand passengers a minute because we need a thousand passengers or an hour. We need a thousand passengers an hour in order to make this make enough money to make it worthwhile because it's so expensive. I think the issue that it is trying to solve is so big that it's keeping a kind of but what if it does work, uh, spirit alive? And we're seeing many, many demonstrations, but many of them are unconvincing and don't even address, as you said, many of the, the other concerns that will arise from this being potentially implemented in a wider scale. So there are a lot of hurdles, but the problem of uh, you know transportation in urban areas is so big 
that even a tiny possibility or not even a possibility, the promise, however unbelievable, uh, is, you know, one worth exploring potentially for cities and also uh, a, a, a financial windfall that would attract uh, many different kinds of people, I would say. I think that's why it does it. It's, it's still not dying. Also, Sarah, I was I was trying to provoke people into emailing me why it will work by taking a staunch. Hey, listen, I wanted to, and yeah, I also, too. you know, I live at the beach, and the the weird thing about LA, and I think this is uh, unique to LA, probably, you know, but compared to other urban areas, the Coast Guard and the LAPD helicopters are outside all day every day i mean there is it's like a police state out here <clears throat> it is there are a lot of helicopters that said there are not so many where i would be like well a private company would never be able to like you know take to the skies like they're underneath planes this is not something that's impossible it's a great idea all right, I'll I find the old works. emails. I'll find the old emails that dispute what Sarah's saying and show them to her. Don't write us new versions of those. We got plenty. <laughs> I mean, oh, or do it's fine. I can handle it. No, I don't. I can't. I can't. I can't take it. <laughs> Just forward them to me. The uh, Intel email. is planning to let virus scanners use integrated graphics chips to scan for malicious memory-based attacks. The idea is to enable more scanning while reducing the impact on performance and power consumption. Intel claims early tests of the advanced memory scanning feature of TDT, as they're calling it, shows CPU utilization dropping from 20% to 2% during the scans. Capability is coming in Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection this month. Uh, they're working with other virus protection companies as well. Another feature of TDT is advanced platform telemetry. That one monitors for unusual processor activity and then uses cloud services to make some inferences about that. Cisco Tetratium is set to integrate this. The threat detection technology will be available on sixth, seventh, and eighth generation Intel processors. This is part of Intel's charm offensive to say, we are going to protect you right from the chip. So do they use their own GPUs, their integrated GPUs for yeah. that? Or mm -hmm. the, do, yeah. can integrated, they outsource that's I, it? That's what I said. They use integrated graphics chips. Right. So it's not like they can outsource it to your NVIDIA chip or AMD chip, like your GPU, uh, external GPU. I mean, tech, I suppose they could. Theoretically. Uh, but that's not, that's not what TDT does, no. Folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to Daily Tech Headlines, available on the Amazon Echo, Google Home, and Anchor app, and at dailytechheadlines.com. Russia's communications regulator sent requests to Google, Apple, and even APK Mirror, which is a sideloading app store, Tuesday, asking all of them to remove the Telegram app from their stores. ISPs also began trying to impl implement the ban on Telegram in Russia by blocking around 16 million IP addresses because Telegram was using Amazon and Google Cloud platforms to try to get around the block. Now, as you, many of you are already guessing or already knew, this had the side effect of also blocking legitimate banking retail businesses that also use Google and Amazon Cloud services. Among the affected services were MasterCard's 3D Secure service for securing credit card transactions. Uh, people were having problem making calls on Viber, uh, sending messages on TamTam. TamTam was the government's official alternative recommendation. Use TamTam. Oh, wait, we accidentally blocked TamTam. Uh, so this is turning into a bit of a uh, fog of confusion right now as they, as they try to stop Telegram from getting around the block. Meanwhile, France's digital ministry announced Monday that it's building its own encrypted messaging service for government use. This is kind of the opposite of what's going on in Russia, where France says, we know that uh, Macron uses Telegram, loves Telegram, uh, but those servers are not in France. Uh, and in fact, all the servers of major messaging apps are either in US or Russia, as far as we can tell. So we want one that we can secure. They've got 20 officials testing the new app. Uh, they expect it to be mandatory for use by all government officials and employees by summer. And there you've got a government employed developer creating it based on free to use code. Uh, best guess is it's probably the signal protocol. That is the best acknowledged open source uh, encryption code out there. It's what signal itself uses, for instance. Now, Patrick, uh, what 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 do you think of these stories and and sort of the idea of the government either fighting encrypted messaging on the one hand or rolling <laughs> their own on the other? 
Yeah, so it's it's they're related, but they're very different. Um, the first, the the Russian, the first one, the Russian government is trying to um, to enforce a ban that they're imposing on the country to root out some apps. It turns out that they are, uh, in this case, messaging apps because they don't want people to communicate in a way that um, they don't have a way to observe to to spy on. So that's one thing. Um, the French one is really about making sure that you have agency over your own, um, the services that you're using. And it's not about the people using that uh, communications app, uh, that messaging app. It's really for sensitive uh, topics that the government is discussing. Because if you think about it, uh, you know, people can be using Telegram, WhatsApp, whatever, if we don't know where the app is from. Uh, in this case, we do. But uh, if you don't know where the app is from, it's not necessarily the end of the world. But if it's government matters that are being discussed, then you want to make sure that it is uh, very uh, safe and secured. And sure, you could use um, Signal, which you mentioned is a very safe and, and open source protocol that people vouch for. Uh, but if you're going to do, if you want to be 100% certain and have control over the, the product, you're probably better off having something that you know and you, you control. And we just don't have that. Like no one, to my knowledge, no country really has these kinds of uh, tools. Maybe some countries have developed uh, private messaging systems that that they have uh, use that they use for their government or official business, but I have not heard of this. Uh, and I think it's now that I know France is doing it, it's like probably we should have been doing this for a long time and everyone should be doing this. Well, and um, Russia is important. actually recommending that their their government uh, officials use ICQ, which is run by mail.ru. Uh, I don't know what kind of security implementations ICQ has. I'm, I'm assuming it has more than when I last used it back in the mid 2000s, but but well, I mean you would think you would think Russia would would be rolling their own if they're so very concerned about security. The 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 idea that some people put forward is Russia is not concerned about security with Telegram. What they're concerned about is people using the public pages on Telegram to put out news that Russia can't control and they can't exactly. find out who's saying it. Uh, it's whereas about in France, surveying. they're actually legitimately concerned about security. Yeah, the 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 goal. Um, I mean, it, you mentioned the ICQ, which is run, run by mail.ru, which the government, the Russian government has its hand in all of this. Um, so I think ICQ, it's fairly safe to assume that uh, the government can see what you're saying on that uh, platform. In the case of the French app, it's not even something that at least at this point is going to be widely used. It's really something to secure governmental communication uh, between members of the government. Does and it give the government access to the governmental communications? That's an interesting that question. That is a good question. Uh, I would suspect not. I might be a little bit you know, naive, but I think uh, Macron and the, the people in charge are tech literate enough that they would know it's probably best to have the thing secure, period. Otherwise, you know, people are not going to use it and the keys might fall in the wrong hands, blah, blah, blah. So I would think that it's a legitimate uh, effort to keep security, to safeguard security. So I don't think there's some kind of backdoor in there, but it, it is it is ironic, isn't it, that Telegram is telling Russia the same thing WhatsApp told, tells Brazil. We don't have the customer's keys. We can't. You're ordering us to hand over the keys that we don't have. We we built a secure system, uh, and President Macron uses Telegram because of that very situation. He's like, hey, they 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 can't see what I'm saying here, uh, and I and I trust that. And yet France is like, yeah. But that could change because uh, yeah. we don't control that. So let's just be extra safe. I mean, it's almost heartening to see a government take the trust no one security principle to heart here. I think so. I mean, my assessment here is that the French government is doing the the right thing. Um, it can be, you know, it could even be Signal, uh, which is, again, very safe, according to every security expert. Uh it doesn't matter. You're, you're not the one who controls it. You're not the one. It's kind of 
uh, it's a sort of a f uh, uh, different situation, but in the case of voting machines, you usually want to have a paper trail um, because even if it's safe, even if you, if there are some things where it's probably good to take the safest option, even if the other options seem or are safe enough. Here, we don't. We know who develops Telegram. We know Signal is safe, etc. But for these important types of communications, you probably want to make two hundred percent sure, not just one hundred and fifty percent sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. There's some good conversations uh, getting underway over there about some of these stories of the day. I'm actually pleased to see folks kind of critically reading the stories that are posted there. Uh, also, same thing going on. Good discussions over at facebook.com slash groups slash daily tech news show. We've got good conversations coming straight at us in our emails, right, Sarah? We sure do. This one comes from Swarmayadip uh, from no Noida, India, which is a suburb of Delhi. Uh, and this was in <clears throat> in response to our conversation yesterday about Ola's plans of adding electric three-wheelers in India. Says the number of electric three-wheelers grown exponentially over the last few years in many cities in India, and particularly here in the national capital region. This is a, a quite a large area. Population of the region is around 50 million people. Put into perspective, it's about the size of West Virginia, but about the, the, the twice the population of Texas. A lot of people, right? Uh, these electric three-wheelers come in many shapes and sizes, capacities, usually operate on a rideshare model, which multiple passengers can share the ride. Fares start at 10 rupees. That's like 15 cents in the U.S., so it's, it's pretty cheap. They're generally used for short commutes, particularly to and from the nearest metro rail station. Ola's rickshaw plan is nothing new. Anybody who's been to India knows that the rickshaw situation there is insanely great uh rickshaws are lovely but it, but it's you know it's 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 already in in it, it works quite well uh um so Maya Dip says, noteworthy here, a number of companies have introduced electric two-wheelers, mostly scooters, in India with some initial success, but the replacement cost of batteries and other associated factors have deterred new buyers, and the sector now is kind of struggling. Also, bank loans that have fueled India's automobile growth are difficult to come about for electric two-wheelers. To put numbers into perspective, the, over the last decade, 0.4 million electric two-wheelers have been sold in India, while the sales of petrol, gasoline, uh, uh, gasoline-powered two-wheelers stand at 1.8 million per month. So there's a real discrepancy there. Yeah, it seems like the the point uh, Sumyadip is making is uh, Ola has been inching into this business. So the news that we reported uh, is just them stepping it up. Uh, and it's certainly not like there were no three wheelers and Ola's flooding the country. If that was your impression, uh, this is, this is a vibrant marketplace that, that Ola is increasing its participation in. So, uh, thank you for the on the ground report. I always like to get those. Absolutely. And also thanks to Patrick Beja, new father, new house, lots of stuff going on in your world, but let folks know where they can keep up with everything. Uh, you know what? You can go to frenchspin.com. It's very easy. And you can find both of my shows, one of which is called Pixels and will cover the tech, not the tech news, the gaming news. Uh, we just recorded an episode with our friend uh, Mark Turpin. And uh, we're going to be recording another one fairly soon, I think, to talk about uh, God of War, which is a new game coming out on PlayStation 4 and getting incredible reviews. And I'm getting ready to be disappointed because there's no way it's as good as the hype is making out to be. Coming out on Friday, we'll have an episode next week or the week after talking about that. All right. Uh, well, thank you to everyone who supports this show, like Mike, like Shane, like David. Those are three people that just pledged within the last 24 hours to help us get to the point where we have at least one more patron than last month. If we get to one more patron than last month or more, I will do something. What should I do? I have Streak! no idea. No, I, uh, I don't think anyone wants that. No, nah, I don't know. It was like the first thing I thought of. Um, yeah. You will, I don't know, eat a tarantula burger. 
I would have to get a tarantula burger. <laughs> if I could easily get one. That's... You will uh, record an a cappella version of the DTNS intro music. I will do that. I don't know. Well, that, is that something people want, work, though? I, yeah. I don't, I don't think so. Don't think or something. maybe they do. Hey, yeah. let us know in the comments. Exactly. Uh, but thank you. And uh, if you would like to support the show as well, go to patreon.com slash DTNS. Uh, if you are already a patron and you don't know this, there is an exclusive RSS feed there that gives you more than just the main show commercial free. Uh, so go check it out, patreon.com slash DTNS. And of course, peruse our fine selection of DTNS gear, Tiny Mantis shirt, always wanted one of those on your chest right we got that we also have dtns mugs dtns hoodies uh show your love for the show and spread the word at dailytechnewsshow.com slash store hey listen if you want to just email us and let us know what you'd like tom Merritt to do to get us to one more patreon <laughs> that we had this month next month please do so feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is the email address we're also live monday through friday at 4 30 p.m eastern 2030 utc you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live back tomorrow with scott johnson talk to you then This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> All right. Good show. Excellent. Good show. Good show, guys. You did it. We did. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm going to go because it's late here and I have a baby, so I wake up early. Um, but thank you very much. It was thank fun. You, Patrick. I'm not on always, next don't week. Don't jump off yes, any piers. You're off next week. <laughs> uh, Sarah, I will heed your warning. Uh, although there is a, a, a pier next to the house, <gasps> but it's really very, uh, very low. It's like... okay. So if you were to jump off, it, it wouldn't be like yes, it would catastrophic. Be, but I still, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll just follow still, your advice. Still don't. Okay. We'll maybe, maybe take a photo of it though. I'd love to see this pier. Oh, I, I have tweeted a few. I'll, oh yeah. I'll, I think at some point, or maybe on Instagram, um, it's a, it's a lovely, a lovely pier. I think I'll, Sarah uh, should take a picture of hers. Patrick should take a picture of his, and then you, you can guys compare. can send them to each other, and it would be peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Ah, ah. friend without peer. Or with. Oh, how did I not see that one coming? <laughs> I was like, oh, is was Tom amazing. just being like, why don't you take this offline? <laughs> why, why don't you guys well, just send each other? One or the other. Either Tom wants us to shut up, or he's making an elaborate pun. <laughs> All right. We're well, both. good stuff. All right. Well, I'll peruse your Twitter account. I'll find Excellent. it eventually. Uh, and I'll try to send it to you. All right. All right. <laughs> sweet dreams. Here to Pierre. Bye. Bye. Sweet dreams, sweet prince. <laughs> good night, sweet prince. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting booed in the chat room, man. Wow. Booed. Yeah. Well, you know. Hey. This is a chat room that's used to this. That must have been particularly egregious. Uh, uh, what are we going to call this show, Roger? Um, mm. <laughs> Roger says, good question. Yeah. Well, there's France sends a telegram to WhatsApp, and there's also app messaging control alt delete. <laughs> but um, France sends a telegram is a good start, but to WhatsApp doesn't really. There's good. also telegram question mark telling yet. Telegram telling yet. Uh, that one's good. It actually works b for France, too, because they're like, yeah. no more Telegram, President Macron. Oh. Well, I defer to you guys when it comes to Russian slash French uh, <laughs> idols. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm good with Telegram telling yet. Telling yet? Cool. That's yeah. funny. Done. Cemented. Done. Yet. Maladets. Do <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it's time to move on to the next topic. So can you hear that? Yeah. The only problem with running everything in the mixer is pretty like. Oh, what are you using to play it? Oh, I got my peer photo. So all the apps. Oh gosh, that's beautiful. Great thing with all the PC apps. Is, uh, oh no! Oh no! What, what? happened? The. What? Oh, no. Oh crap! What happened? Oh, I don't know what happened. So for some reason, hmm. Uh oh. I wonder what did this. For some reason, my recordings. <laughs> Uh, all just recorded me, not system audio. Oh, in fact, oh. it's do we do we do a backup or do we not? Well, we have we have a uh, we have a backup in the in the YouTube recording. Okay. Uh, so so there will be audio for the main show. The pre and post show will be here, obviously, on the yes. uh, main recording, but. Uh, the pre-show will not be. The post-show will be here on this, but the pre-show would not be. Oh, crud. Wait, are you sure you you, you didn't get all of it? Or yes, is I am 100% that... sure that I only got... I'm looking at it right now, and it's it's only... For some reason, it did not record the... Uh, it did not record the system audio. Hmm. Well, I'll have to, like the troubleshoot that. Or like something that was. Well, no, I know what happened. I I was messing around in Discord before the show, uh, and was changing out some Discord settings, and I did not anticipate that this would happen. But by doing that, I somehow messed up Audio Hijack's uh, ability to get system audio. So uh, we are going to have a shortened post show today while i go and figure this out um right. but thanks everybody thank you for sticking with us we'll see you tomorrow we'll see with you scott tomorrow. johnson sorry about bye that bye. Bye.